guys, it's Ivy here and welcome to our new series that we have been doing here for our Holbrook Zoo. So this is my new sandbox zoo that I have been working on and um, I am trying to make this a little bit more of a realistic aspect. Um, not that I don't always try and make mine um, my series realistic, but um, this one I'm going to try extra hard to um, see what I can do and it's kind of hard to get all the realism in there with um, the franchise modes just because you know you're so limited on money and everything so it's just easier to not have to worry about money and you can just go in here and spend as much money as you want and right off the bat make it as realistic as you need it to be um, but yeah so I am hoping that this just kind of betters me as a um, creator that I just you know get more ideas I'm able to put more stuff down and do stuff more freely not have to worry about all the you know challenges that come with a franchise mode so I'm really looking forward to this whole series um I am sorry um, I haven't talked to the other videos I wasn't sure if you guys exactly liked me talking in videos or if you guys would just rather watch speed build uh, me personally i just like watching speed builds i i always watch them at night and with my kids i can't really hear the people talking anyway so i always just have it muted um so i guess that's why like i prefer not talking so i guess i assume other people prefer you know just to not even bother but um, I did a poll not long ago and everyone said that they want talking so I am going to try and do this talking thing for you guys and see how it goes um, so so far I am doing this uh, faux rock wall area back here uh, I'm taking a lot of inspiration from the Cincinnati Zoo uh, if you look at their zoo, they have a bunch of faux rocks in every habitat that they pretty much have. Um, it's a faux uh, rock background. Um, so that's where like I keep getting the, the faux rocks from. And um, I know this habitat is shaped a little weird. I do go back in here and I fix it. Um, I just like to get the main layout you know and you can always fix it as you go and that's kind of just what I do is I get the main layout going and um, you know just fix it the way I'd like it um, so I if you guys have read by the uh, title we are doing the Japanese macaques and the cranes so I chose these animals because really it was kind of just on a whim um, really wanted to make this area back here like a pond or lake or something of that sort but I didn't want to do flamingos I just had this thing where I was like I do flamingos all the time and in the entrances of my zoos and I just do not want to use a flamingo again you guys are probably getting sick of seeing flamingo habitats so I was like what other animal could I use and then I was like oh I could do the crane and then I just happened to peek in there and I was like oh well you can use you can have the macaques in there with the red crowned cranes that would be perfect to you know to build them both a habitat <laughs> together and so here we are voila thus this habitat is born um so that's where we got these guys from and uh so I was going in here at, see I'm shaping up this habitat a little bit better and making it um you know not as awkward and out there and the fence I start putting down I didn't realize it at the time but those were not gonna hold in the uh, the cranes the macaques stay in just fine with the way that the water is they they don't swim across but um, obviously the cranes can swim and that fence was not gonna hold them in so I do go back delete that fence and I make a custom fence in here um, so and I did just kind of want to touch base a little bit on um, some of my other series that I've been working on. I, it seems like I constantly, you know, are throwing out a new series. Um, you know, part of my problem is I'm just, you know, all over the place, very ADD and um, just you know, always wanting to start something new. That's my toxic trait. But I am going to try and stick with all of these series. Um, I have not forgotten about the Ivy Valley farming. Even though um, 
Not a lot of people seem to be liking that one, so I'm sure that one's going to be coming to an end soon. But I definitely cannot end it right now where it's at. There's still a couple more things I need to put in there for that series. Um, and then as for my franchise, the uh, Silverton Zoo, my tropical one with the terrarium that I have going on. Um, I honestly, I don't know if I'm going to make any more videos on that one because I am considering deleting uh, PZ Plus, the mod that I have that enables me to build smaller habitats for these animals and, um, you know, put down as many plants as I want. I I'm thinking about disabling that and that would make, oh, I think every single one of those animals I have in that zoo just not able to stay in the habitat that they're in because I built them small to where it's okay with the PZ Plus mod. So I'm thinking that obviously if I do delete PZ Plus, um, I won't be able to play that anymore because I, the habitats will just be too small and there's no point in deleting it all and you know starting over in that aspect. So um, I will let you guys know on that though. Um, I'd really like to like to try and delete PZ Plus just because obviously not everybody has it and then the habitats I build they are way smaller than like what you guys would build and you guys can't really take many ideas from what I'm doing if they're obnoxiously too small or you know things like that so I want to I want to be able to give you guys ideas and help you guys out and I don't know <laughs> and I can't really do that if you know I have the PZ plus mod and you guys don't and I'm making these habitats and there's just no way it's possible for you guys to do it the you know the way I'm doing it so it's just kind of defeating my purpose of you know building these habitats to help you guys with ideas and you know take my ideas and make them your own so I I'm probably going to delete that here soon um, and if obviously if I do, I'm going to have to look at this habitat again and make sure that it is big enough. I might have to make some um, little, you know, changes and tweaks here and there to make this big enough if that is an issue. So, um, you know, we'll we'll just see where it goes. Um, but anyway, here you can see I'm still tweaking the habitat a little bit and um, making it smaller and just overall like better I w thought I wanted the water all the way around it and then I was like no because we can kind of put habitats beside it or whatever and um, you know loop it around we'll see what happens with it um, so we're, we're just making it this shape for now which I think ends up being a really good shape for what they need um, and uh, just you know <laughs> while I'm talking uh, I just want to thank you guys for being so patient with me and um, putting up with me talking. I know I say, oh, and I stutter on my words a lot, even in my franchises. Um, so I appreciate you guys. And if you guys have read my bio, you guys will know that, um, you know, a couple years back, I was in a car accident. And ever since then, I've just <laughs> a little delayed and I can't come up with my words properly. I struggle a lot. Um, my memory is really bad. And it's also, you know, made me really all over the place and stuff of that nature. So I really started this channel in hopes that um, it would help me a lot with my talking, my speech, and uh, getting out of my shell a little bit more. Um, I'm very <laughs> introverted as well. So I just, I thought this would be a good change and, you know, help me as a person get better and maybe not struggle as much if that makes sense um so i appreciate you guys a whole lot for you know being by my side and, and sticking through it um so i i'm going to be trying my best with talking through all of these videos uh this time i i had a list written out of things i wanted to cover um and i'm already through that list uh so i don't really have much more to talk about except you know i can kind of comment on some of the things that i am doing in this habitat um so i was thinking about how i wanted to do the climbing frames i see that they have these metal poles and i think they've been there for a while i've just never used them so i kept clicking on them and i was like man i kind of want to use these but i don't know if it'll fit for the habitat and and you know lo and behold it just wasn't going to work out for what i wanted 
and they're kind of weird shapes i feel like you can only make like one thing with it um pretty much like what they have there so um i i just went with some um prefab uh climbing frames um i'm not very good with climbing frames if i'm being honest i can do like a couple of things but climbing frames are just not really my cup of tea my forte and what i really want to spend a lot of my time on like i hate to sound like lazy and you know not creative on that aspect of it but um i don't know i just struggle with climbing frames and being creative with them and but um, I do try and um, do something here and at least um, like connect them together with the logs and make them look realistic. And, you know, I use these uh, Y posts to look like they're holding them up and holding them in place so they don't move if, you know, the macaque jumps on them and it moves. It doesn't roll off the post um, where it's at. So... Um, yes, yeah, so we're just getting into there. I have snow down and um, Obviously, you know the macaques like the snow um, my My favorite trick to do especially when you have uh, a shelter Like a big shelter is the stuff that you don't really want the well, I say stuff But the terrain that you don't really want to be seen as much whether it be like the rocks or dirt or snow in this case you know, you can just put it in the uh, shelter and cover it with, you know, the con any kind of flooring, like the concrete or metal, whatever you choose, and you don't see it, but it's there and it counts towards the animal's happiness. So that is uh, one of my favorite tricks to use. Um, um, but yeah, so here I definitely needed to put stuff in the water. It was so bare and it just was not looking good. Um, I was... <laughs> God love my fiance. He helps me out so much with this stuff when he is here um, with me. And I show him and I ask him, I'm like, something looks off about this. What is it? Will you tell me? And he's like, there's definitely too much water. You need to do something with the water. Something You need to put something in there. Which, granted, I was going to put down some lily pads, but uh, not to this extent. So I put down a bunch of lily pads, and here in a little bit you will see I put down um, another kind of grass in there to make it look like algae, and then some leaves in the water as well. Um, and here I'm using my um, nettles. I like to try and put a lot of plants around the posts and the trees because normally when you see these taller plants out and about, you know, wherever you may be, it's around a tree because they you know, can't cut it with a, um, with a lawnmower or the animals don't necessarily go right up around the tree and run around it. So that's normally where the most tall foliage is, at least I've noticed. Um, obviously, it just depends on the animal. <laughs> but so that's why I've, I did that. Um, and then here shortly, I will be moving into their shelter and working on their shelter. And I had so much fun working on the inside of it. It was just definitely a different so different than what I've usually have done. Um, I have been watching a lot of Caesar Creates in his Elm, Elm Hill City Zoo, I believe is what it's called. And he does a lot of realism in that and a lot of backstage areas. So I have taken a lot of pointers from him. So I definitely have to credit him there. He He's amazing. He's definitely one of the best out there with playing the game. Um, so I was uh, watching that and I see how he builds these backstage areas and that kind of inspired me to try this out too because I was like I really want to try my hand at the backstage areas and trying to build a realistic zoo kind of like how he's doing it so that's where um, our Holbrook Zoo came in um, and while I am on the whole topic of our Holbrook Zoo as a whole um, I want to also credit that the entrance to our zoo, uh, I had a lot of inspiration from the, oh my gosh, <laughs> the, the Hershey's Park in Pennsylvania. Oh, um, Pen yeah, Pennsylvania, USA. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So 
I got a lot of um, inspiration from them on the entrance and when it came to our gift shop I just kind of I just kind of threw that together um, obviously like I've been saying I take a lot of inspiration from the Cincinnati Zoo it's the zoo I've been to the most in my life um, and then also you can just a small uh, trick uh, if you go onto Google Maps you can go in there and actually walk around on the paths because they had somebody go in there with a camera strapped to their back and walk around the whole zoo so you can actually use Google Maps and like be in the zoo so it helps a lot with you know being able to see some of these buildings and the layout of the zoo and how they are doing the zoo and I think a couple other places are like that as well if not all of these zoos um, are like that I just happen to notice that Cincinnati Zoo is like that so um, but yeah so I took a lot of different things from the architecture there and plopped it all together and we made our gift shop and then our little drink area in the last video I also got a lot of inspiration from Cincinnati Zoo as well on that little shack and um, the little like kiosk type of thing if that's what you want to call it I don't know if that's what it would be called but um, you know, like the little stand there with the drinks um, so that was also Cincinnati inspired um, so that uh, that is a lot of uh, where my credit is due um, as a lot of inspiration from them so and then over here I am making a little bath for our macaques because they like to stay nice and warm in the hot springs where they normally reside um, so they reside in the mountains where it's cold and snowy and freezing but these hot springs they rest in there and they get nice and warm um, and so I just wanted to make sure that they had a little pool in here if ever the weather was too bad you know <laughs> in the zoo um, where they're locked in uh, that they would have their little area to bathe still um, and then what I use there I got a lot of blueprints from the workshop um, and this happens to be a like a kitchen blueprint that I'm using um, if anybody wants to know which blueprints I have exactly I can get a list together um, otherwise I I'm not um, but if, again if anyone does just let me know and I can definitely get that list together uh, not a problem um, but yeah so I got the tables from that blueprint and I put them down I really like that table and just how it is so we've got that going right there I made sure to put down a lot of fruit as if they you know that's where they got their food together the keepers did um, and we got some empty baskets, a water bucket in case, you know, they need to rinse out any areas. They can grab the bucket and, you know, plop some water down wherever. Uh, and, you know, we've got like our, just our little boxes and other knickknacks. Um, and so now I am going in and I am finding some nice uh, enrichment items for them to use. And of course it was a hindsight type of thing I don't know why I always forget that um, some of these animals have these really big uh, enrichment items so that's why that was kind of plopped down in there last minute um, and I struggle a lot on the inside where their bedding is all of that I I'm honestly I struggle a whole lot with where I want to place the stuff and where the best places for them would be because again I want to try and keep it as realistic as possible but um, you know with the way that the functions are it's, it's kind of hard to put stuff where exactly you want it um, so I, I struggle there um, and then I also so I get their water down and then I get uh, food down in there as well again in case they can't go out in the zoo <laughs> out in their little area outside and they're locked inside so they have food and water on the inside there and I put this enrichment item uh, I put it in there for now but I actually move it back in the other room 
because I kind of consider the other room as like a storage room slash, you know, prep room and also like where the macaques can go. Like if it gets cold, it's, you know, just an, a catch-all room sort of. So I move the mobile mirrors over into the other room as if, you know, it hasn't been put out yet or, um, you know, they, they keep it up for a little bit and only put it out every now and then. So that's why that goes over there. And then again, like I said, I struggle with figuring out where I want to put the, all the food and the water at. So we are struggling with that. Um, and here, um, finally getting to it, this is me uh, making an attempt at a garage door. At first I was like, eh, maybe I'll just make it kind of like a, um, like a gate type of thing with gaps. And I was like, no, let's do a, a garage door. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, in the end, all of that ended up being too far down. So I did have to delete some of the rows and move it up. So the keeper could go through it. The animals could go through it just fine, but the keepers could not. It was too far down. And I think the chain had a lot to do with that. It kind of blocked their pathway of where to go. Um, so we fixed that. Uh, sorry, my my computer, it like shuts down if I don't move it like a lot. So I'm sorry if that cuts out at all when it does that. I'm gonna try and remember to move my mouse <laughs> while I'm talking. But anyway, so yeah, here you can see I'm moving the, the other garage door over on this side. So they have two different doors that they can close if it's too cold, um, they can, if they need to like prepare their food, they can close the door, keep them out of there. Or if it's too cold and they need all the animals inside or storming or something, they can, you know, also close the other door, just however they want to do it. And um, so right here, I definitely did not want a big random pool in the middle of the habitat, but this was the crane's only food enrichment item. So I had to add it. So I did my best to hide it in the dirt. Um, in, so that's why it's all raised up like that. And I have rocks on there. So I tried to blend it in as best as I could um, with it still being accessible, which was the real hard part. So I couldn't really add any like foliage or anything on top of it and fear that it, it might become inaccessible. So um, we just kind of left it as is. Uh, sorry if it's a little bit of an eyesore. You, you live and you learn. Um, so, you know, hindsight's 2020. So in the future, I will definitely make sure to check out the enrichment items to make sure I make enough room for them. I really liked where all of the climbing frames were and I did not want to move any of those. So we just um, plop the pool down right there for them. Um, Let's see here, what are we doing now? I know, it, that's bad. I actually recorded this a couple days ago, so I kind of forget what's going on. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put the ceiling down and just add a, a little bit of details here. Um, I wanted to add some vents, to, you know, cause they like the colder weather, so I wanna make sure it stays cold. And um, struggle with figuring out what kind of details I wanted to add to this building. I know it's just a backstage building, but granted, I didn't wanna leave it just completely plain. Um, but it does end up rather plain, um, and just in my way of thinking as a backstage type of building that, you know, the guests won't ever see, and it's just really used for the animals and the keepers. I can't see the zoo spending money on making it, um, you know, really fancy or putting a lot of money into it for... Um, minor details like that that is more for aesthetic purposes so I just was like we'll just add a little bit of details make it not so bland but also um, you know not overdo it because again this is just um, like a backstage room where you know the zoo they care they want it sound so the animals don't get out of it obviously but they don't need to add a bunch of details to make it pretty so that's what we're doing there um, and I, I think right there I went ahead and I moved uh, that wall down a little bit or, you know, duplicated it, moved it down a little bit. So there wasn't that gap there between the door and the, um, the door frame. Um, and so I am building right now. I tried my best to make um, my own frames for the education signs. But that I struggle with a whole lot as well. Um, being creative on that aspect 
um, don't know why, but so that's why we have this board here, um, and uh, so we're getting that together, and then I put two poles on it, make it stand like that, um, and I, I don't think it looks too bad the way it is. Um, it works. Again, I need to get better with making those. If you guys have any suggestions or any tips on making better signs and you know frames for that, I would greatly appreciate it. I take any help you guys will give me any constructive criticism. Um, and then uh, you know we're just checking, making sure all the animals are okay. I'm gonna add the donation donation bins. And I try my best to hide those away where the guests can't see them and like. We can't see them, but they're still usable. Um, and then trying to hide the backstage area as best as I can back there. And finally, here is um, one of my favorite parts of this whole thing, which is definitely inspired by Cincinnati Zoo. I'm sure other zoos do it as well. But again, I am very introverted and I don't go out much. So like Cincinnati Zoo is one of the few zoos I've ever been to, um, and especially multiple times. And what they, are really good for which again other zoos might do this um, but I just notice it here is they are really good for wanting to hide the habitat away like in a nook so they add a bunch of foliage in the front of it so not the whole area is open if that makes sense it's gonna make sense here in a minute when I start putting this foliage down um, but yeah so they, they like to put a lot of um, foliage where there's just little gaps in between it where you can stand there and look through it um, because they are a bo botanical garden as well so they like to try and keep as many plants in there as uh, possible so that's why they keep um, you know all the plants there and try and make it like nooked away uh, so that's what I am doing here I am trying to make sure that the guests still have ample space to look in there but it's also in a little nook and it's hidden away and so the animals you know they're not as stressed because the guests are just looking through in like this little gap and there's enough area foliage around it to you know kind of hide them away but anyway guys i have talked almost this entire video i am running out of time oh my goodness um but thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble on i appreciate you guys so much remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already i greatly appreciate it i hope to see you on the next one bye guys